Dr. Zadeh is the Dan Family Chair and Professor of Neurosurgery at the University of Toronto. She is the head of the Department of Neurosurgery at Toronto Western Hospital and medical director for the Kremble Brain Institute at the University Health Network. Dr. Zadeh is being awarded for advancing the molecular and genomic understanding of brain tumors, leading to better ways of discriminating, classifying, and managing brain tumor subtypes with the potential to transform the clinical care of the disease. Dr. Zadeh has chosen Bailey, A Dog's Purpose by Rachel Portman for her music. Dr. Zadeh, please come to the stage. I have to say this is better than the Academy Awards, <laughs> and this is definitely better than the Oscars. The most pivotal events and inflection points in life are not predictable. Equally, the people we meet along our journey are not predictable. Ultimately, serendipity plays a major role in how our lives are shaped. And as a scientist, we are all well familiar with the impact of serendipity. Before I go on, I have to say that I did try chat GPT for this talk. <laughs> and it was just too precise a grammar and style of writing, so I liked my own better, and I'm going with my own version, so you'll have to listen to my imperfect version of the passage. Going back to the theme of serendipity, it was purely luck that I escaped Iran during a time when long-range ground missiles were being shot at Tehran, which was for the first time in the history of military warfare. And I'm fortunate to have had parents who made sacrifices to bring me to Canada, and I'm really grateful to be Canadian. My parents are here with me tonight. Thank you. My entry into medicine was also very serendipitous. I actually never wanted to be a doctor. I don't like memorizing, and I'm not very good at studying. But somehow I went into medicine. Meeting the neurosurgeons who encouraged me to pursue neurosurgery was also serendipitous, as I never actually knew that there was a profession called neurosurgery, nor what they did. I do have to give credit to Norm Hill, Michael West, and Derek Fewer for encouraging me as a woman to pursue neurosurgery, which at the time that I did this, very few, even fewer than they are today, did neurosurgery. It was also luck that I pursued my PhD with someone who pushed me beyond my cognitive and scholastic limits, and more importantly, taught me resiliency on how to manage demands whether they were reasonable or unreasonable. <laughs> and it was really luck that I was assigned to the internal medicine rotation where I met the person who was to become my future partner, who is here tonight, who is simply the calmest and most even-keeled person that you will meet, and someone who really understands me and appreciates what drives me, perhaps I would say, more than I do myself. And of course, I've had the great fortune and luck of having so many remarkable mentors, colleagues, peers, and bosses, many of who are at table 11, 12, and I apologize, I don't know the number for the Kremble Foundation. But all of you, uh, and many of you who are in the audience, have supported me, have promoted me, are my ally, most importantly, and yes, on occasion, challenge me, which allows me to grow. A special note of gratitude to my students, my trainees, and my fellows. I've invited a couple to represent them as a group who take a chance on me. They trust me, and really together as a team, we're able to do all the work that's possible, the work that I showed you earlier today, and hopefully continue, and thank you very much for that. For those of you who are familiar with the concept of anti-fragile, it's a property of systems in which they increase in capability to thrive as a result of stressors, 
shocks, mistakes, faults, attacks, or failure. Uncertainty, variability, change, and chaos, and finally, overall randomness is what defines our paths as individuals and as scientists, leading to discoveries that have impact. Resilient is to be resistant to these factors and stay the same. Anti-fragile is to thrive on these factors and go stronger in response to stressors, unpredictability, and the change that comes with luck and serendipity. I submit to you that research benefits intensely from all of us being anti-fragile. What I have learned from my years of research is to stick to simple principles in research, but also life, build in redundancies and embrace diversity, resist the urge to suppress randomness, instead welcome random ideas and proposals, and everybody in my lab knows that. Make sure that you have your soul in the game. Experiment and take lots of small risks. Pay equal attention to small discoveries and projects, but at the same time, perhaps not bet on a major risk that results in a great loss. I think it's important that we don't get consumed by data and that we respect discoveries that were made in the past. And we always have to keep our options open to remain nimble. To me, that's one of the biggest lessons, and we move forward, and the direction is only forward. In conclusion, I want to express my sincere gratitude to the Gardner Foundation, the visionary individuals who have supported its mission, and the exceptional team that work behind the scenes to make this all come together. I'm deeply appreciative of the reviewers who played an instrumental role in selecting me as the inaugural recipient of the Gardner Momentum Award, together with my co-recipient, Dr. Christopher Moshbosh. And I know I'm not in the league of the past Gardner awardees who have gone on to win Nobel Prizes, but I know that this recognition will stand as a pin pinnacle of my career as a surgeon and a scientist. I do really want to make a special note of thanks to Janet Rossent for putting together the vision of the Momentum Award. And I think this category of the Gardner Award embodies her vision. The award will have a profound legacy, paving the way for others to benefit from the positive effects of the recognition. And I have to say, maybe I could suggest that the award should bear your name, Janet. The greatest serendipity of my life, of course, are two incredible daughters that I have, Sadie and Ayla, sitting at our table. And I cherish and admire the unpredictable richness that they bring to my life. <laughs> what can I say? One of them's a teenager. <laughs> and as for the choice of the music, it's the theme song of the movie, A Dog's Purpose. And Ayla and Sadie and I watch this movie on average once a week <laughs> at Sadie's insistence. But in the movie, if you've watched it, if you haven't seen it, after many lives, as the dog wonders, what is the purpose of life and why are we on this planet, the dog's answers really resonate with me. Of course, it's to have fun, Whenever possible, find someone to help and help them. And don't get sad about what happened and what could have happened. Just be here now, and to me, it's really important that we live in the moment. Thank you very much, and thank you again. Thank you.